Hi, this is Steve. Welcome back to my channel, Scale Model Kit Review. Well, today I bring you something totally new, and that would be a scale model railroad setup. Now, every year I take a trek to Tulsa, Oklahoma for the world famous Chili Bowl. Now, you probably saw some of my videos I posted up about that. It's a really cool event, and I totally love motorsports and racing of all kinds. Well, while I was there, a good friend of mine contacted me and said, hey, I want to give you a tour of the railroad setup that I've been working on. So I had no idea what I was in store for. And uh, without giving away too much, I'd like to say thank you to Carl for giving me that tour. And also thank you to Steve Davis, which owns this setup. It's a private setup, but it's fantastic. His setup did make some of the railroad magazines. And this was from October. Uh, 2019 and it's the represents the Kansas City Southern Railroad so without further ado let's get started Kansas City Third Subdivision HO Scale Model Railroad. Um, we're just outside Tulsa, and the model railroad you've seen it's it's in a building that's 45 foot by 60 foot. The model railroad takes 30 foot by 60 foot of it, uh, with an expand another 45 foot foot by 60 foot expansion that we're currently working on. Uh, current model railroad is the third subdivision modeled in a era 1982. My name's Carl Shorefighty. Typically I get listed as the chief carpenter on the project. Um, everything that you've seen or will see is all the bones under it, all the structure that's under it. That's my handiwork, uh, my design. What I was given by the layout owner, I was given a 2D plan on paper and figured out how to bring it to a 3D reality. Uh, while supporting the layout and also supporting the ceiling. Uh, that gives us some HVAC and dust control from the rest of the building. Okay, this is our dispatch center for the, the KCS third subdivision. Uh, this is where our dispatcher will sit uh, and have control of the routing and signaling for the, the mainline trains. Now, once the trains are off in the individual cities, they typically have individual control of those areas. The dispatcher doesn't have control of that, but he's got control of all the main line switches and any of the siding switches primarily. All controlled off the screen. Normally we'd have a basically just a schematic drawing of the, of the railroad here is really all the dispatcher can see. And it'll, it'll indicate empty track and occupied track and what routes they have set up and signals that are set up for the, for the trains that are on operating. So the operators do have radio contact with the dispatcher, but they could literally run the railroad, operate their train without talking to the dispatcher just by following the, the cues from the signals out on the railroad. Um, we do have a couple of accessory monitors here that uh, let the dispatcher kind of see what's going on in staging, just if we have a glitch back there, we, we may get an indication of it from here. Welcome and we'll take a tour. Okay, what this is, is the model of the Kansas City Southern Railroad. Uh, the era modeled is 1982. So when you look at the locomotive paint schemes and the cars that are here, most of them are all 1982 or earlier. This is the the main yard of the heat of the KCS third subdivision which is in Hevener, Oklahoma. And we are modeling from Hevener northbound to Watts, Oklahoma on the current section of the railroad. The expansion will uh, continue from Watts up to Pittsburgh, Kansas. As you come out the north end of Hevener and go towards the end of the, the 
corridor here. Make the left turn and you come back on the left. Will be Poto. So now we're still northbound out of Hevener and making the U-turn custom built bridge by Mr. Davis's father to match uh, prototype photos that we've taken. So very, very close to reality in some of the modeling, especially a lot of the bridges. And all of the uh, passenger stations you see are also built by, by Steve's father. And all the, the track layout is very close to the prototype, what it was in 1982. It's all based off of uh, real railroad uh, switch lists and, and manuals that the actual locomotive, actual railroad employees would have used in that era. As we come through Poto and the industries there and what was considered called modern carpet, carpet factory. You come out the north side of town, another bridge that was modeled off of real world photos. And just, just north of Poto, you have a branch line that goes to Fort Smith. And in Oklahoma, there is only one railroad tunnel in the state, and it happens to be on this line to Fort Smith. And again, that tunnel entrance is modeled off of, off of real world prototype photos. and the, the exit of the tunnel is the same, although the, the tunnels, tunnel portals are very different on each side. And the, the KCS main line continues along the front. The Fort Smith branch line is on a little bit of a raised level to the back. Area representing the railroad industries of Fort Smith. And then as we come across the front of Fort Smith, we come across the, the first siding on the KCS main line at Spyro. This railroad is operated just like a real railroad. Each of these rail cars that you see, they are specified to go to the given industry and during an operating session, the operators will have be specified to pick up certain cars out of that group to take back to Hevener Yard. When they get back to Hevener, they'll, the other cars they've picked up from Fort Smith, they'll drop those at Hevener and Hevener will have more cars that are destined to come back to Fort Smith and the operator will bring them back and, and place them at their, their designated industries. As the, the main line comes by Fort Smith, we go into the, the Spyro siding where we get two trains to pass each other when needed. And then we come around the corner to Spyro. And another switching district for one of our Dodgers, one of our local trains. We'll handle the local switching at the local industries here. And again, we are just like the real railroad, controlled by centralized traffic control with a dispatcher sitting in, a, in another room at a computer screen, controlling our, our switch controls and what route the train's gonna run and the permissions through the signals as the, the train is authorized to proceed on a green, has to stop at the signal on a red. If the light happened to be yellow, that tells the crew that the next signal beyond is gonna be red to be prepared to stop before they get to that signal. Another, bridge, another one of our bridges that's modeled off of real life. And then as we come north out of Spyro, we have the biggest bridge on the railroad, which is another custom built by, by Steve's father. And this is the bridge over the Arkansas River, which is a navigation channel in this part of Oklahoma. 
it comes up to the Port of Catoosa just outside Tulsa, ultimately. And in, in reality, this bridge is as straight as an arrow. For our modeling purpose and modeler's license, this was the best place for us to put it. And so it is you know, 160 degree curve. But again, you see the photos of the, below the, on the lower fascia. This is another project that was modeled off a of real world photo. We come continue northbound off the Arkansas River Bridge. We come into Salisaw, which is our middle of a division yard. And we have two operators that work this yard, yard master and an assistant. Again, the, the depot here is another custom-built model by Steve's father to, to match the prototype. And then track arrangement to, to match the era and industries that, that match the era. Salisaw sees several trains come through that they have to interchange cars with. A Dodger from Hevener that they interchange cars with that comes to here, turns around, goes back to Hevener. Another Dodger that starts here and covers the rest of the railroad's local switching and returns it to Salisaw. There are several through trains that will interchange cars with Salisaw. And then on the north end of Salisaw, we have an interchange with the Missouri Pacific Railroad, which is another active railroad on the model. Uh, the Missouri Pacific is primarily computer controlled. It is run under automation through the computer, except for the train that interchanges cars to the KCS. And then that same train comes back later in our operating session and we'll pick up cars from the KCS. The local operators take control of the train, do the switching maneuvers, and then tell the computer by pressing one of the buttons on our fascia here that uh, they are done with their work and then the computer will take over control of the train and, and run it back to, to staging. Now, Crown Zellerbach, which was, as best we know, it was a facility that uh, treated railroad ties. Foreground, the Missouri Pacific is going off stage, going behind a hill into its hidden trackage. The KCS mainline running along the back. At Salisaw, the KCS mainline has started going uphill. Now, this is a double deck layout, um, but the decks are not visible from the same side. The decks are opposite each other so that we use a raised platform and the, ultimately the layout ends up about the same level as your feet. So it's easier to operate. So now we've started that climb to our upper deck. And we're coming into Marble City. And Marble City, there's no real industries at Marble City, but there is a branch line that takes off and goes to a quarry that in real life is 10 or 15 miles distant. And it's actually, it is modeled on the railroad. We'll see it in a moment on the other side. The town, as we go up the grade, the towns are all flat so that we can switch without our trains rolling away down the hill away from us. So we've flattened out for a moment. As we come out of Marble City, we're continuing back upgrade no, around this large peninsula. So we've got the KCS main here. This is the branch line to the quarry and then underneath is our hidden trackage for the Missouri Pacific. So they all come down to this end so that they can do a big U-turn to the opposite direction down the other side of the wall. And from here, this gives you a good view of, of the KCS mainline going uphill along the backdrop. That's running up approximately at 4% grade at this point. And on the, in the foreground, you've got the quarry branch continuing around to this side. Another custom-built bridge uh, that was a kit bash unit uh, to, 
to model the existing bridge. In reality, this bridge is actually much closer to the Marble City end of this branch line, but a little modeler's license, this was the best spot to, to fit it into our scenery. And then into the quarry. Is, is another, there's an operator dedicated to the quarry when we're operating. He sorts the cars here at the quarry and makes several runs back around the corner over to Marble City to, to interchange with various trains on that end. Continue up the hill, we're just about to level back out as we come around this corner into Stillwell. And at this point, we have gained 24 feet, or not 24 feet, 24 inches in elevation from where the track was down at Stillwell. And here is where we've got a 24 inch raised platform. So now, as the, the track has come up 24 inches, so have the operators. So the layout is still at the same relative height to us, so it's easy to operate, easy to function switches and, and get our work done. And Salisa is one of our locations that we've got. Active crossing gates that are just uh, controlled by photo cells as the trains create a shadow activate and then as the clear if I can find that there's the signal. Train clears the crossing and go back up turn off. So as we come through Stillwell we've got another one of uh, the custom built depots. And so where we're at here at Stillwell there is another level of layout 24 inches below, directly below this area. This is where that Crown Zellerbach industry was at, is directly below this. And this is where we get what we call the mushroom, where this upper deck is viewed from this side, the lower deck is viewed from the other side. And out of Stillwell, and when we make currently our right turn, we come into Westville. Westville, the grain elevator, that is a custom built by one of the friends of the layout. Uh, built off of uh, Google Street View photographs and such and some of the photos that we were taking when we did a scouting trip out to the area. So, you look at Westville and look at Google Maps and Street View, this, this building is going to look very accurate. What is there in real life? Again, track arrangement is, is based off of prototype research and, and documents that uh, the railroad employees were used back in, in the area in 1982. And as we continue north from Westville, we come to what's known as Feeder, which currently is, a, I believe, it's a Tyson chicken feed plant. Process the chicken feed and then deliver by truck to the various chicken houses around the area. Theater and, and go into the darkness there would come into what, what we call Watts from Watts, Oklahoma, which would be the north end of the third subdivision and the end of the, the scenic part of the layout. 
and once the crews park their trains here at Watts, this is uh, computer control. And the computer takes the train down around the corner down there, down through our helix, and uh, once it goes down the helix, it goes into our staging yard, and, and the computer parks the train back where it started from. Now what you're seeing there, that is part of, that is the other end of the Missouri Pacific trackage uh, from Salisaw and that trackage also runs all the way back to our staging on a lower level. Okay, now we're, we're back to Kievner. Now, you've seen all the on-stage sections of the railroad. There's a little bit of off-stage stuff too. As you come south out of Kievner and come behind this dividing wall, Part of what we have, this track going up is a branch line that goes to Walder in Arkansas, which is modeled above our staging area. And then this is a switch lead track for this end of Hevener Yard, so they can pull cars all the way down on this track and not be in anybody else's way. Then this is our northbound track out of staging, and this is the southbound track from Hevener to staging. And our staging yard, Basically, this represents everything south of Hevener, what we would call Shreveport, and currently the other half of staging after the trains come out of Watts represents everything north of Watts, which is what we typically call Pittsburgh or Kansas City. Um, so this is everything you see on the lower level back here, all the staging here, this is all run by the computer. Uh, the computer brings the northbound trains that you see the locomotives on up here, parks them here. Our human dispatcher then can see that the train's ready to enter the layout and works with the Hevener yard master to get the train started. When Hevener's done with southbound trains, Hevener yard master will tell the dispatcher the train's ready to depart. The dispatcher will tell the computer it's ready and the computer will actually run the train out of Hevener Yard through our southbound track back into southbound train staging back to the track it's assigned to. And then uh, the way this is set up, the computer can run the train all the way to the other end of the track and stop the trains basically at the other end so they're ready to go the other direction. So ultimately this layout does make a big circle. It's just kind of folded around and, and switches back and forth a little bit. Um, the train's either going uh, southbound to start the layout at Watts. The computer will bring them up the helix in the, the right order based off our timetable schedule. And the crews will pick them up at Watts and run them, run them southbound back to Hevener. The northbound trains, computer brings them up. They get out on the layout, run north. And when they get stopped at Watts, the computer picks them up again, brings them down, back down through the helix, and parks them again in the yard. And then, of course, the upper level is the, the Waldron Switching District, which is another one of our operators. That's, that's what they'll do during our three or four hour operating session. They'll pick up their train in Hevener, come back here, work the industries of Waldron, placing cars that need to be placed and picking up cars that need to go back to Hever. We do take a little bit of modeler's license. There is an Amtrak passenger train um, that runs through the passenger stations on a, on a schedule. Yeah, it's back here on track 14. And we do have a, a Kansas City Southern business train, which is using some older, I believe they're F unit locomotives and some old passenger cars that are painted in the black scheme with the yellow and red stripes that, that'll make an appearance on the layout. <laughs> so fairly accurate to the area with a little bit of modeler's license. layout is run by digital command control. Uh, a lot of the components are digitracks. 
That's that train you talked about right there. Yeah, that's the KCS business train. And then the, the maintenance train, the cleaning train for cleaning the track. That, that runs on an automated schedule. You know, we usually get done sometime during the week before we operate just to help take any oxidation and dust off the track to make sure everything runs smooth. And with the, the digital command control, each locomotive has its own receiver in it, like a remote control car would have. Um, but when you get locomotives from different manufacturers with different motors with different gear ratios in them, they don't necessarily all want to run the same speed. And so this table is a, a setup that uh, if you run each individual lo locomotive individually, and it will adjust the speed table for each locomotive so that at a given throttle setting all the locomotives will run the same speed so that they will pull evenly on the train it's if all the locomotives are on the front end of the train it's not a great big deal but we have several of our longer trains that have distributed power where we have locomotives in the middle of the train and if those locomotives aren't running the same speed as the locomotives at the front of the train, we have train handling issues. Um, either they're pushing too hard, and especially in curves, it'll cause the train to derail. If they're pushing too, the middle units are pushing too hard, it'll derail to the outside typically. If they're acting as a brake and not running as fast, and creating tension in the train, it'll it'll pull the train off of the inside. Yeah. Okay, now the, the current railroad that you've just seen is in an area that's 30 foot wide by 60 foot long. Uh, the railroad is currently going through an expansion that will add another 45 feet by 60 feet just on the other side of this wall. And right here it's still, well basically we're actually right at the end of this switch. Instead of making the right turn to Westville, this is where we'll make a left turn to go into the new area. And the scenery at Westville and Feeder will get moved into the new area. And then Watts, instead of just being a dark hole down there, Watts will actually be modeled as it is in reality as part of the new section. And then the new section will continue the layout up to Pittsburgh, Kansas. Then Pittsburgh, Kansas, it'll be back on the lower level, come back through this wall and basically run down this aisle to get it back to our existing staging roads. This is the wall and the door we just came through. Mm -hmm. This is part of the existing railroad. This is Salazar, which is right behind the wall, that upper level. And instead of coming to this end and making a right turn, now we're gonna make a left turn, come through the wall right there where it's not complete, and come into this section of the building now. And it's gonna run all the way down to the end, across, all the way down to this end, do a U-turn, Go back, come back across. That's all on the upper level. That's the upper level of the mushroom up there. Once it starts coming, so it's come all the way down and around, done this U-turn right behind me, and come to this point, which is right at the end of this wall. And now it starts doing the downhill grade again. Because now we got, on this side, we got to lose 30 inches. We're gonna lose 30 instead of 24, so we got a little more space between the levels. So now we're coming downhill around around this is actually the back side of this wall right here around this way and this is where we're standing right now is right here still coming down grade until we get down here and now you see that the railroad is now underneath the upper level and it's coming back underneath right back the layout is right here the lower level's here and the upper level's up here and it's coming on down make another big u-turn 
and going all the way around the perimeter of the building, back into the existing section of the railroad, and then back to that staging yard that's all at the other end. Now, where that side has come uphill, this side is going downhill. So now we're already back at the lower level. The helix will go away. So the helix won't be won't be necessary won't anymore. Be necessary anymore because we've come up and we've come back down. Yeah, you've got the space for that. So, Nat natural space. Yeah, natural running gets us back basically to the lower level. We've got to do a little bit of creative work on the other end. But, and this uh, is all your your this is all your carpentry. This is yes. everything you've done here. That's impressive, yes. Carl. I'm, I'm the one that does the carpentry, builds the bones underneath all of it. Yeah, that's impressive. Very impressive. I can see why you don't want to get back to your regular <laughs> job just quite yet. Yeah, I want to get to the point where because you know, you start looking at this, if you get out on one end over here. And look at how this is framed. Because you've got this raised floor that's two feet above the floor. Mm -hmm. So they're coming through on the upper level. They're coming through here. This is the first part of the new layout from, from the existing layout. I have to come through the wall. You know, in this area, we're standing up, working here, as we go all the way down around the room. Once we finally make our lap, all the way through this building, we're coming back to layout that will be right here. Okay, yeah. Coming this way, and then going back through the wall, back to the existing layout, the, the staging area. But if you look at this, trying to make sure we don't have any supports blocking the view of this lower level, this is hanging off the ceiling. Yeah. So I the, see. the back of this level is hanging off the ceiling, and the, the front of it's on the wall. And then this section of layout will just be cantilevered. It'll just be a straight board and an angle brace yeah. coming out. Yeah. Very impressive. 